And we're back, and uh, we are in the studio with the holy Rabbi Gav Bellino Shlita. May his days Shlita. Great, great what does Shlita mean? I don't know. She, she kol yamo tie, I something, I don't know. <laughs> you're not, by the way, you're going to have to cut this, because I know everything. Apparently, I'm a genius, and I don't know. I, I mean. by the way, am so happy when you're on the podcast, because I always quote something from the Bible, and I never have it right. I always make a mistake, and people are like, that's not what's in the Bible. It's v'chachachecha, nachachachucha. And so now that you're here, we have... Uh, it's got to be like, she'yechiel yamen tovim or something. Right, yeah. yeah. So got, he does know. Those, he does that thing where he pretends he doesn't I know. I don't know. It's, yeah. You know what you're like? Talk to me. You're literally like, I don't know if anybody watches RuPaul's Drag Race, but the last winner... This is going to be a compliment. ...was, I, uh, was um, I forgot her name. Was an Orthodox rabbi. No, she wasn't an Orthodox rabbi. She was a Taiwanese uh, or, or Thailand... She was, I don't know, wow. Anyway, but she always pretended like, I don't know. I, I'm not good at dancing. I'm not good at sewing. And she killed it always. You say you don't know, but you know. So don't do not do the, just I, go, I into the, go into I the, I, I didn't know. Practice, I didn't practice my Rashi Te vote before I got okay, there. Okay, everybody slow down. Can you introduce our guests and talk about I was about in the middle of special? introducing our guest. For the guest. Well, he started on. with First a rabbi, Periel. I started with the That's rabbi. You, you start with the rabbi, and then you go to to your other guest, which is Elon Altman, who is a superstar. We just finished the tour. Know your audience. He was most of the shows he opened a powerhouse, a power, a the perfect. Not just I don't want to say opening act, but an act. Tight, twelve to fifteen to ten, whatever we needed, delivered. Stands there, destroys. Even though he stands at the height of what? Five foot seven in my wife's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Five foot seven in his wife's shoes. It killed, He's killed, great. and it was an easy backstage and just fun. And always has a tagline to, he like he'll say, "Try this next time on the job," and it kills. He's a great joke writer. He's a great joke writer. And he had a huge joke that has gone viral and has been stolen by um, many people. In the beginning of the war, you wrote this joke. Oh, yeah. And I'll let you say the joke. So the joke was, um, it was just a tweet, really. Uh, I'm not surprised that Hamas was hiding in a school. I was just surprised that the school was Harvard. <laughs> oh, yes. Hilarious. And at that time, yes. this was like December. That was a pretty funny joke. But uh, now, with all these encampments and everything, it's like, yeah, it's, it seems like, like there are actually a lot of supporters out there. And now it's, Columbia might be a better tag on that joke. But now you see it everywhere, exactly that. I said, oh, but I didn't know it was Columbia and Harvard and UPenn. But I owe it, whenever I see that, I'm always like, that's actually Elon Altman's. Track. Oh, yeah. No, don't give me too much credit. I, I took a lot of heat for it also. I have to always explain, like, I mean, like people who are supportive or into the ideas of what Hamas was doing. Yeah. Not that there are actual like full-fledged card-carrying members at these schools with machine guns. Right. <laughs> well, you know, like there's a difference there. It's a, it's a tweet. It's like, uh, yeah. you know, it's the idea. It's the idea. It's uh, to be Yotzi. What's, What's that? I don't know. But still an obligation. I think, I think so, by the way, listeners, I think when we have the Holy Rabbi Gav Bellino, we should be a little more shticky. I do something with like some kind of a, a shtick, like 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 do a what this another thing that Periel doesn't know to be Yotzi. Oh. Do you know what to be Yotzi on something no. means? What's that? To fulfill an obligation. Oh, right, I so wouldn't you have, have something to do, that. right? You got to so do like, something. So like so like on, make sure on you Shabbat enough, kind of like, and even though you're not eating bread or gluten, you take a little piece just to be Yotzi, that you were Yotzi on this thing, or you go to the wall. The, the the and you, you you touch the wall and then you leave and you just you know I'm Yotzi I I touched the wall and I left you know to be just like I did whatever did I needed it. to do to do no it. it's not necessary it's not a pejorative it doesn't have to be it's in the voice by the way it's in the voice it's in the it's, it's, it's in the tone it. it's the tone no, I was, no, I was, I was to be Yotzi Leo uses Yotzi all the time really yes yes okay <laughs> all right <laughs> can I tell you what happened at home last night. We're on the phone with um, our travel agent for abroad travel. Uh, his name is Yassi. 
at high class travel. <laughs> and Yossi speaks English, and the and every other word he drops in is Yiddish, and is it's it's Yinglish, and he's <laughs> he's coordinating with Leo. Leo and him have their own like they so half the words that goes. So I'm gonna get you out Thursday, and Leo goes, "What was that? Thursday, <laughs> Thursday, Thursday, <laughs> Thursday." Okay, so we're on the phone with him. Leo put in um, a. Uh, I met, you remember we told you we got this um, amazing meat from this company that 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 sent Leo. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot the name of it. Chu, C H U in the five towns. Okay. So we had this big piece of meat that Leo was like, okay, we're finally thawing it. Let's just cook it, and we had it. So he put it in the oven, and we get back to the table, and we're speaking to Yossi, we're trying to figure out Australia. All of a sudden. The fire alarms go off, and I look at the kitchen. I see flames. Oh, not like smoke, flames like in the emoji. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, there's a fire in the house. <laughs> and I run into the kitchen, and this is how Hashem and Mashiach energy works. Before Passover, I did some cleaning and some rearranging to get ready for the seder, for the for the meal at the house, and I remembered, oh. We bought a fire extinguisher <gasps> when we did the renovation. It's nine years old, this fire extinguisher. I went, I go, I know where the fire extinguisher is. I got the fire and <laughs> put the oven out. Oh it was a my God. Fl- God. Flames. Go ahead. He's thinking his mind flame. No. Two, oh, there's no, two flames on. causing another <laughs> flame. Modi, I'm I an know adult. How mind... I'm two flames and a piece of meat. I am an adult. <laughs> Stop it. I would See? never. A two flames and a piece holiest. of meat. Folks, he'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. It was insane. Well it done. Was... Well so done. what happened? Did you ruin the steak? The steak was gone, but thank God we didn't ruin the oven. We caught you it. You definitely weren't the one who was cooking the steak. You have Leo no idea. Is, uh, I think what the, we never used the broiler part. We have a we have a very very expensive fancy oven. That nobody has ever used. What do you guys cook? What's your like? Leo makes amazing salmon and amazing rice and uh, healthy stuff, uh, easy stuff. But this is like, we never, we never have meat in the house. They sent this to us. We don't know how to cook this. (laughs) And so Leo put it all in oil and put it right right by the boiler. By the way. The Kuban Pesach. I mean, literally, just uh, the, it was like the sacrifice. It was the burnt offering. The burnt offering, absolutely. Luckily, he, we caught it. And luckily, I knew where that, that, that fire extinguisher was. First of all, when I go over there, I have to bring my own milk for a cup of coffee. They have, like, it's protein shakes and wheatgrass. And maybe if I'm lucky, Modi will open me a can of tuna. I, I, yeah, I gave her <laughs> tuna for one time. No, but we tell you to order in. We, we, we're we like, what, how, what, what? Which is exactly how I am at my house. Like, But when I, you come over, we're sometimes we were in the middle of a tour. So we're home for only three days at a time. So how do you shop for three days? Do you understand? I don't know. I yeah. Don't, I don't know because I don't – I a guy says – my husband says that when you come to our house, if he's not there, you're going to starve. Like it's, I do nothing. I don't even offer you a glass of water. Their fridge is my favorite. Everything <laughs> the, the, little, the little cans. You love a chic can of soda. Yeah. <laughs> it's also you also it's drink like, less of it. Yeah, of course. You 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 get you get we have these little diet cokes. I know. So when, when we have we do have a treat. I if I am eating pizza <laughs> or a pretzel, I need to have a diet coke. <laughs> but if you don't open a full can, now if you have a small can, you're yoitsi. <laughs> you're yoitsi on the on the on the diet coke. Anything? No. no, but uh, you grew up on the Lower East Side. Have you heard any of these words? I've never heard Yotzi before, but it's it's one of those things where when you hear a word for the first time, now I'm going to go out in the street and hear everyone, even though we're in Chinatown right now, I'm going to hear people saying Yotzi. No, yeah. now you'll hear it because now it's like yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my brain knows the word, so I'm going to hear it all over the. By place. the way, speaking of Lower East Side and you growing up in the Lower East Side, Arthur and I were at Casa Cipriani. Of course, you two, were two weeks ago, whatever it was, and um, we're. Arthur Luxemburg, who sp- helped sponsor the podcast and is a friend and family, period. And um, we're staying in Casa Cipriani. He says to me, I need to say Kaddish tonight for Randy, my wife's my, my wife's uh, uh, father. Her father passed away on this date. And so we're staying in Casa Cipriani. Arthur's in full Arthur. 
like purple suit, shirt, top, this, the, the, the orange shoes, the whole nine yards, not orange, whatever it was. Like Willy Wonka's accountant. The, no, but like stunning, amazing, you know, amazing. nothing like, okay. And I go to him, where are you planning on saying Kaddish tonight? He goes, there's a 1010 minion in the Lower East Side on, um, what's that street? Broom? No. East it, Broadway? Yeah, on East Broadway, but like very down by you, by almost by the FDR. And I go, okay, I'm in. It's down the block. Henry Street. Oh, yeah. Henry Street. It's so a forgotten street. It's a forgotten street. And it's this minion. Mm -hmm. It's all the way downstairs. Now, this is a, a Wednesday or whatever night it was. Imagine everybody looks there just like with the white shirt, the suit that's like the sun hit it so hard for so many years. It's like a different, it's like purple almost. The blue is like purple. And there's a rabbi and there's, but this is a minion. That like that they, they all know each other where they live. They see each other at three times a day on Shabbat nonstop. Me and Arthur show up into, with no yarmulkes. And they don't have a bin with yarmulkes because anybody going to this shtibel has a yarmulke on this their head. Amazing. Shtibel, you know what shtibel is? It's a small synagogue, small synagogue within a community. Like a church has a steeple. I was going to ask what a yarmulke was. Nothing on that. <laughs> so one of the kids, like, they, they recognized me, and they're, like, they were in shock. That, and Arthur's in this, like, bright, gorgeous <laughs> suit. So and the kids took from their, under their hat and gave us each a yarmulke. They had a double yarmulke? No, they had a yarmulke, but the they way, had just the hat. There's probably more asbestos in this steeple than all of Arthur's gifts. The steeple looks like, by the way, it's, it has a <laughs> sign that says, membership, $100. For like to the for the I go I go for, for, for two hundred you could be the president. <laughs> it was like it's so old it's so but it's it's they had a minion ten ten. Why why it why at ten ten at night? Why are you? I guess there's people who need to say they just have the whole, every night. I it's a Marev minion. There's a it's the evening service. So whatever you were busy with, you couldn't get to a service or you weren't by Mincha Marev by by the afternoon and the evening service together. This is a ten ten. This happens every night. It every was, night. It was, I was blown away that this exists and it's underneath, like it's literally half a block from your, your front door. Yeah. This, this exists. And it's like another world within a world. And it's 10 men. There were a little bit more. But it has to be 10 men. Yes. 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 It was just, what a New York experience. I'm going from Casa Cipriani into a basement on Henry Street to say Kaddish for Randy's father. So what do you guys do for yarmulkes? They gave us they the, gave the, the boys, the boys, there's like a little yeshiva in down there and they all just picked up their little hats and gave us the yarmulke that was underneath and they just yeah. davened with the hat. That's really cute. They just cute. prayed with That's the hat cute. and not the, but it was, a, it was a moment. Let's see. It was a moment. And then, yeah, it was, it was just like a New York kind of a moment. Where else are you finding a 1010 minion? Anyway. That I'm was, picturing like at the Port Authority, you get like the bus schedule and it's like, there's like a minion one of those and it's just there like, is. oh, there's a 10-10. Yeah, there there's there's yeah. even apps. There's even apps. There's, apps. there's an app for that. Oh. Make sure you're talking into the microphone. Okay. Or just it's hard bring to see you. Bring, I know, so bring closer to you. All right. I don't touch things. Can um, women do minions, doc uh, doctor? You can do whatever you well, want. Yeah, yeah, do seriously. whatever you want. You want to organize your own minion of I don't women. know me. I'm just Yeah, curious. you can have a women's tefillah group. Yeah, totally. Yes, That's nice. Totally. Yeah. A women's tefillah group. Okay. So talk to me. Um, the tour we had together. What was your favorite show of the tour? Oh, my gosh. So the tour was unbelievable. It was, it was such a dream to be at these amazing venues, to be opening for you. Uh, and the crowds were so great. Like, I think we must have performed for like 20,000 people. More, you add yeah. it all up. It's yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's crazy. A little more. So um, my favorite, maybe, I mean, they're all, they all had like their own different vibes and everything. Kennedy Center was like the most prestigious. That was right. maybe like just the coolest. Uh, it just, you felt like you were there with the president watching you. Uh, right. But I, I think there was one show that was like beyond insane. Well, the one outside of Philadelphia. Yeah. Which I forget the name of that town. Keswick. The Keswick Theater in town you'd never heard of um, was... It, look, it was from like 1910, never been touched. It, it looked was, like an old movie theater, but yep. it fit a ton of people in it. It fit, we, it, we had, I think, 1,400 people. And it, even though it was a long theater, it was, a, it was kind of like 
not too high. Right, it was long, but there was no balcony. So just it was long as far as you could see. So Elon gets on and he gets his first joke. I forgot where, where you usually get your first laugh. And then I'm in the I'm on the I'm on the wings, and you, the laughter comes through and like literally pushed me back a little bit. It was so strong. I go, oh my god, this is this is going to be an insane show. And then you killed. I went on, and I was like riding this high. It was so they just and they had this like statue on on the sides of a woman on like a she looked like she was um flying or whatever. Yeah, it was, like a, it was like a winged, some kind of like art the deco. Muse. Art yeah. deco. Yeah, the so muse I, and or then, something. And I knew what joke I was going to use with it. I go, let's give it up for J Jesus Christ's sister. <laughs> <laughs> and I saved it to the end because I knew once I would say it, everybody would be looking at it the whole, yeah, the whole yeah. show. That's just, right. okay. And it was such a, and it was a, even even funnier because it was I was wearing a suit that I was like done with. I was like, I knew I was gonna sweat through this suit, and I was a suit that I, an old suit that I was ready to to, to, to let go of. And I said, and and I spoke to the stagehands at the end of the show, at the before the show. I go that when I came down, you know, they, they see me in schmatis, and then you come down in a suit. They go, oh, you look good. It's a great suit. I go, yeah, I'm throwing it out after tonight's show, and they go, really? And they pretended that was like, that was a little, uh, that was our banter. Yeah. I get off the after the uh, the meet and greet. I just take the jacket off and throw it into this big garbage, and they all started cracking up. Oh. <laughs> they just thought that's what I do after I do my show. I, I, I throw my suit away. It was just that suit was done. You could have donated it to the guys at the Henry Street Minion. It was so. <laughs> it was so hilarious. They're like we could get thirty more years out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> we we had we so uh, at, before that show we had this. So we get to this town. It's called Keswick. You've ever heard of it? You, you have no. a place in the Poconos, no? It's nowhere near there. Okay. Uh, Pennsylvania's one of the biggest yeah. like countries. It's, it's literally no Australia. Idea. <laughs> it's Australia. I have no idea what anything <laughs> is. Thing. I'm so dumb. Um, we get to this town. It's called Keswick. It's really cute. It's like a little like a Hampton-y town, but like not fancy. And we got there early because we wanted to get out of the city without traffic. And um, we did the sound check. We had two hours to kill. It was six o'clock. And... Uh, they said there's a great Greek restaurant across the street. And we go across the street and empty. There's not a human being. It's a no massive, one. not a not a human being. Why? And we because it's six o'clock. No, it was like it was four o'clock. Oh, it was so four o'clock. Yeah, it was so, so it was early. Four o'clock. We were four hours before the show. It was four o'clock. And we got there and like empty this restaurant. That just tables of chairs and tables. And we go, hi, we are four. <laughs> And we'd like to, to eat. And the, the guy literally gets out his like re reservation list, like like you're at Le Cirque. Like <laughs> we were at Le Cirque. Yeah, yeah. He's he's Polarious. flipping through pages, doing calculations in his head. And uh, and his it's and like we're not going to be able to seat you till ten ten. He finally seats us down, and we eat. And, I, and like, we're like, it's like he goes, "Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Like, we we have a uh, booking for later on. Like, like as if we were going to sit and eat for six <laughs> hours. Yeah, it's it was so crazy. And um, but the little things like that happened on the tour was really cute. And um, Yvonne told me a great story at your birthday about when you were young, you saw Modi perform. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it, it is um one of these hotels in the Catskills. I don't know which one. It was the Concord or the Raleigh or something like that. And Modi was the comedian there. And uh, which was so different because usually every comedian there is is ninety years old and on their back last then. Year. Yeah, ba back then they were. I was the young one. Yeah, I was the young guy, and we had Stu Stewie Stone and Freddie Roman and Malzy Lawrence and all of those guys. And like once in a while, it'd be me. And they're like, wow, where's the young guy come from? Um, and um, but but you know, I, I don't know if we talked about this, but when we did the show at Town Hall, some woman came up to me with her son and my. I had a CD which she had. And she said to me, um, this is my son. He's 26. In 1990-whatever, how old were you? Oh, 1990, uh, 1996. He goes, how old were you? I said, I was 26. He goes, I bought this from you when you were 26. And I, I was carrying <gasps> him when oh. I saw your show. So that was like That's a, so sweet. It was sweet. so sweet. Yes. Nothing. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. He'll open for you next. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 I'll see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 oh, God bless me. 
Ugh, right? Ugh. So, Gav, I asked you, I texted you, and I said, can you come back? Because you're always such a big hit. And you said, I don't know. It's tight. It's Shabbat. No, it's not Shabbat. It's like Arab Shabbat. I have to get ready for Shabbat. She, she was and then, by the way, it's- And I said, I why don't you get your get priorities straight? He I mean, I just, so I. And then Modi was like, What are you talking about? Do you have any idea how much stuff he has to do to prepare I, for first Shabbat? First of all, I teach and I speak. Hey. And I, you know, we have like workers come to the synagogue and like I want to make sure that everything's in good order. And I cook. I cook for my family. I cook for the synagogue. This week is Schlissel Shabbos. What's that? So I'm very busy. What? I'm sorry. The, 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 the Kichala, right. The, 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 oh, hold yeah. on. Describe the Kichala. Hold on. I'm gonna, we're going to do that for a minute. We're going to do that in a minute. But just so you understand, he's cooking a chulent, which is like the stew, one that's vegetarian. one. And let me tell you, they're delicious. Thank you. They're absolutely I'm not kidding. It's not just a, it's not just a, it's not just a custom, It's and he cooks them, and he and there's food and there's drinks and there's drinks and there's drinks and, there's, <laughs> and yeah, and he's got to prepare all of that. So when you when you call him on a Friday, it's insane that he's here right now because there's so much to to to, to do. But um, and he prepares a Dvar Torah. He prepares a word, not like he doesn't wing it. Like okay, it's the parsha of whatever Hashem. Why did Hashem choose to come down now? Because it's, he's Hashem. He does what he wants. You know. <laughs> he it's very a good. By the way, it's bar. very good. Literally, he doesn't just wing it. He has a whole thing, and he builds up, and it's in. And for him to be here on a Friday before Shabbos, we know, thank you great. and we, we we appreciate. I, I love this. I, Schlissel Shabbos. Go ahead, give it. I want to. I know. I want to be the Andy to your Conan. I love this. This is so fun. The, the Andy to your what? To your Conan. I love this. I what love a, a sidekick? I understand. A sidekick. A sidekick. A sidekick. I'm a sidekick. What is a Schlissel? Schlissel Chala. So it's a ridiculous thing. The Shabbat after Pesach, you uh, you bake Chala with a key on it. With a key on yeah. it? Yeah. I thought like in it. On it? In it. So on it. A real key? Or you make a key, the challah in the shape of a key. It never looks that way. She's, she's already it never. Good. Instead I, of being like, oh, wow, I'm going to learn something new. This is going to be wonderful. She's already like, why would you? How, what, what, this is why people hate us. Put a key in your challah. She's. <laughs> Just go from go from the other angle of like I'm I can't wait to hear this. You're it's so amazing. Up, you're opening up doors of I don't know. Yeah, you like just an actual blessing. key. So, yeah. so okay, so it used to be that they would do it with an actual key, and then like some kid choked and they changed it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so no, Zadie did lost. Did his, he really? Zadie lost his teeth. There was no teeth job. No, I don't know. No, that was, that's your own. <laughs> no, I have no idea. I have no idea. It used to be that you put a key in it, bit into and then the it was like, why well, waste the key? I don't know. I, I don't know how. Did it they happened. use the key because we're landlords? Now we have lots of keys. <laughs> now it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Whatever you have lying right. around, you use. It's a solid driver's job. <laughs> Warden Shabbos. Oh God, that's I now never, it's a key fob. Okay, it's a key is like f the key to open up doors and all of that. You just went through Passover. Just did eight. It's the eight first. Ch it's chametz periel. It's the first. It's the all first right. bread, real yeah. bread. Just like it's a key to open up doors. Just like just periel. Do you how bake? Nice. Are you a baker? What do you think? I think not. <laughs> you think correct? Do you cook? How would you have handled the, the, the steak situation in Modi's house? I would never have gotten into that situation to begin with. Right. I personally was shooketh when he un <laughs> when he, he fought it. And like I was like I, and he did it so he did it so like confidently like yeah. oil and yeah. and salt and pepper and yeah. massaging it into it and puts it in the oven. Yeah. Boom. I don't I don't literally. I don't, I'm don't, not gonna, don't I'm not gonna curse, but when I, um, I decided that I would marry Guy when I understood that he, amongst the other things that I like the way that he did, that was a nice way to say it, Love boy. that Thank he you. also um, cooked, he's All a right. chef. And like, I'm just surrounded by good looking men who are excellent chefs. And me, who else do you have? I have a, I have a, there, a there's batch. A, yeah, I have a, I have her husband's a, in the food. Gav is a cook. Gav, yeah, Gav is so, a full on cook, chef, whatever you want to say. Amazing food, amazing everything. It's, it's and, and so I always say it's, you know, when everybody comes over and guys in the kitchen. And what are looking, you up to? What are you doing? I come for vibes. Like, I wrote a book. Yeah. It's exerted. <laughs> what do you do? What I'm vibes. I, I get invited just because I'm so much fun. 
and a pleasure and a joy to have around. Oh, and <laughs> I think so. I think so. No, of course. We love you. I'm usually on the balcony chain smoking cigarettes. No, you're no. not. Oh, no, stop you're not. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ew. Her husband gets the food and she gets in the way. <laughs> <laughs> It's in the way. I'm like, the men are where they are supposed to be in the kitchen. Everything has to be a women's studies class. For yeah. I mean, not if you're not a woman. Like, if you got, you know, you could just get to be like the dominant, right. you know, macho one, then no, you don't have to fight for your place. Can we speak about you and I? This is going to air probably maybe after. <laughs> On June 4th, you and I are doing. Um, a conversation. A conversation at the Eschel. Uh, it's their like fundraiser. Fundraiser, dinner, place. interview, event. I don't yeah. know exactly what it is. I'm looking forward to it. No, I mean, it's amazing that you do it. That Eschel you, is, uh, Eschel, so, explain what Eschel so is. Eschel is, uh, I think we've spoken about this before. Eschel is an organization that takes care of the Orthodox gays primarily. And the, 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 the those associated with them. So they do like parents retreats. Um, they're helping this, this 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 unique subset of the Jewish community that needs some help, um, and it's a pretty diverse it's a pretty diverse group that goes to their stuff, and they have professionals that come in and uh, offer services, and there's part of it is just socializing and building community, um, in within a safe space, and it, and it's a remarkable thing. I think it's like 13 years old. I think it's their uh, like bar mitzvah year. Oh, and. Uh, yeah, I mean that's incredible. It's a really, that's really why nice, you're my favorite. It's a really, it's a really nice, it's a really nice thing. It's do we tell? Did we talk about the the? Did we tell the story about when we had them at the synagogue? We had like with a, the cake, with the cake. I think we I did. Think that. We I think we did, did but I think it was just very. But it was fun. our it was first like, episode. I, that was, that was no, first, I, that I think was, we spoke about that the first episode. Whatever, check it, check it out in the archive. No, oh. tell it right away, it quickly and easily. They, very quickly, we had a Shabbat tone, and it was really to build like create a safe space for dialogue. And parents came, and it was it was it was this whole nice thing, and we 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 announced parent, parents were coming, and, and we we announced it, and it was it was good for the synagogue, and it was good for downtown. So I thought, I I, I I'm at a wedding, and I get my I, I check my phone, and it's a seven one eight number. I'm terrified of picking up my phone when it's a number I don't know, and also when it's a seven one eight number. Yeah, <laughs> then no good could come of this it's conversation. If seven one eight is calling, right? some this Brooklyn like no, nineteen eighty uh, number, right? Yeah. So, I it went straight to voicemail, and it was it was a rabbi who was like very upset with me that I was holding this event, and then I like then I, like it rang again, it rang again, it rang again, and like I started getting emails, and I started getting like actual threats. Um, uh, that we would be excised from the Orthodox community. And I didn't think this was like such a great moment of progress. I mean, other Orthodox synagogues had hosted them before. And I didn't think that there was some kind, that, not, that, that by virtue of where my synagogue happened to be, like close to the Lower East Side, I didn't think that I was going to be in trouble with like a whole neighborhood of rabbis, the 1010 Minion. I didn't think I was going to be in trouble for hosting this event. So they ended up um, like, how did they deal with it? They wrote a letter and they wrote a letter on like 10 by 17 and they all signed the bottom of it. There were like 15 signatures, uh, super cute. And they and they put it up in all of the synagogues <gasps> and in the they, the butcher wouldn't let them. But in like the supermarket and like on a few like bus station, like bus uh, shelters, I mean, it was crazy. So I had my assistant go down to the Lower East Side, take a picture of it. I sent the image to my friend, uh, Richie Heisler at Butterflake, and he printed it onto a sheet cake. I had him decorated with rainbows. And we, that's what we served at the <laughs> shop, at the, at, 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 the, at, the, at the dinner. And I sent, I sent a picture to one of them that I knew. And I said, you know, tell your friends, um, you know, like this is, this, this is what we think of the letter. And that, you know, I was able to do that also. Listen, I can smell a bully a mile away. As a bully, I, <laughs> I, I can smell my own. So I know, I also know, you know, it's like a heckler a little bit. Like you can't, you, you can't just like meet what them head thinking? on. What were they thinking? But you can't meet them like head on. Right. It's not going to be a dialogue and it's not going to be cute. So you have to like get around them a little right. bit. And you also have to show that you're unfazed by it. P.S. 
I was super phased by it. I was so upset because I, I mean, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't want to. I, I, you I know what I think about, about it. it. I thought, listen, yeah. this is a community that needs support, and if they, they're, if they're willing to look at our shuls, what a blessing that is. That's amazing. Yes. So we have to go out of our way to make them feel safe, to to let them know that they're that not only that they're welcome, but I say we prefer them. It's so much. Leo love. and I were, were so at much the, lovelier. Leo and I came to the to the Please. dinner. We were there, and it was it was hysterical that that letter was on the on the cake. And um, just first, people are was, keeping Shabbat. They're coming to for for kiddush and coming for for a meal. All, it's so great. I have two things to say oh, about lady, that. There we go. Number one, and I have said this for many many years, even before I had kids, that any mother is so lucky to have a gay son that every mother should be blessed to have a son who is gay. Mm. Why? Why why are you doing that? That's very broad. It's not that broad. Sometimes there's, you know, it could be a gay that's not like a not like a not like a well dressed gay. No, but like a oh like a the wrong gay. I well the term that we use is shitty gay. <laughs> That's the term. Like, the yes. some gays are just shitty gays. They're just like, not like. Okay, no, go about like, your You boys. have to, and again, I always say you can always judge the character of a woman by the gaze she keeps. You obviously have the highest <laughs> standard. You have me and Leo as your gaze, and hard. you have other gays in your life. That what? What are those two? Uh, Nisi Mandoron. Nisi Mandoron. You have like top shelf gays. I do it. <laughs> some of them are like. Listen, this it's not you, ble you be blessed with a child who has Mashiach energy, whether he's uh, gay or not, and that's that's that. Okay, but we're talking about something specific right now. Yeah. There's nothing worse, and I can I have empathy for my mother in law that some bitch is gonna come and steal your beautiful son from you. So if you have a gay son, he's never gonna leave you. He's a not true. Oh, are you no, out no, of your no. mind? You take. You are so good to your mother. All of my gays my, are so good to their mother. My mom. I don't know if she would say that. My mom says Leo is better to her. She calls him. <laughs> okay. She calls her. Yeah. She calls, my mother calls Leo. His mother has a lot to say. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So you gave her Leo. Yeah. That, what I kind gave of a Leo. gift is that? Yeah, Imagine I that. Her, I gave her another grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hello. That's the act. Um. And the other part is is. Thou doth protest too much. Anybody who is that anti-gay, yeah. who really is, it bothers them so much, has something going okay, on so. within them, oh, within themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're putting so, so effort to get every rabbi's signature on it, right. it's so... Those, it's so insane. Those are the men you find in roadside motels with underage boys. That Ilan, I have not. <laughs> we didn't hear from you. you can, those, ac you those accusations about me at those hotels are not true. <laughs> I don't know what you guys heard. Those videos, it's it's Toby Maguire. It's not me. <laughs> it's AI. It's AI. <laughs> Social progress. It's gonna wax and wane. It's it's that, that that's no, the nature. No, that's the nature of life. Now we realize. Now we understand how it's. It's a safety concern, and we. But have you're really paving the way as an Orthodox rabbi. I've said this to you off camera, off off air too. You are really at the forefront and paving the way, and it is. I'm such really, an Im I'm really not. There are there are a lot of us. Are you, are you gonna it's call better than Sadiq again. Sadiq, better, I was it's calling better, Sadiq again. No, it's really it's better it's better than you think. It's getting more tolerant than 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 yeah. than you think than you realize. Um, this is again. That's an evolution, and you understand. People didn't weren't raised with my secular values, and I I got I got both. I was lucky, and for me it was a negotiation. But for other people, that negotiation, that conversation that they're having to make it work and make it make sense, so they don't have that. And you know, they 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 have a whole religious edifice that they have to that they that they have to protect. At the end of the day, I think that. that you know, ten out of the ten out of the fifteen names on this letter, they just wanted to have their names with like more important rabbis. Like, ooh, we signed the letter. Sign like, yeah, they, they sound like John Hancocky. Yeah, of course. One guy just made an X. You can tell which one was gay by how they signed, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> they one, nodded their eyes with a little heart. heart. That's <laughs> definitely <laughs> the gay guy. Yeah, rainbow, a little rainbow on top of his. Uh, Every letter in a different <laughs> color. <laughs> yeah. What was I? Uh, <laughs> what we were talking about before? We were talking about this, like how Jewish names. 
if you're Sephardic, sometimes it sounds really hot and sexy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you're Ashkenazi, it sounds like so nebuchy. I'm talking about the name Yochanan. Imagine someone comes up, hi, I'm Yo- Shmi Yochanan. Like it's hot. Yochanan. Yo- it's equal to Yochan or Hanan or it's hot. In Yiddish, the guy's name is Yechanan. <laughs> if someone comes to you and says, hi, I'm Yechanan, you say, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that that's the name they gave you. <laughs> I'm so, so it's so horrible. <laughs> sounds like you're choking. Wait, this is like, this is also, this is is, is the thing I've, this is, this is again, stoned on the treadmill. Um, There's Jewish names that have to have a last name. So we we have a friend, Michael Hoffman, and we can never say Michael. Yeah, of course. It's Michael Hoffman, Michael Hoffman. (laughs) It's, it just, it just, it goes together, you know, Jeffrey Epstein. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Harvey Weinstein you can't say just Harvey it's not just Jeffrey it's like you need, it needs the last name and then in the Sephardic world where they always name the name and the first name and the second name are first names like Omer Adam oh Chaim Moshe it's like the same is that Chaim really Moshe. a thing yeah I don't, for me when you just the, the the ring of it the ring of it it's like it needs that you have to say the second name. Right. Right. Sometimes if the name, if the Hebrew name is so horrible, you just go with the last name. Like, um, like, give me a, give me a horrible, like a, a, a difficult, let's say B- B- Bertrand. I mean, his name is Bertrand and it's just so annoying. And if he, he, he doesn't want to go by Bert, so it's Bertrand, mm-hmm. which is such an annoying name. Bertrand. <laughs> For a stutterer, it's one of the worst names. Bert. Tran, everything <laughs> is stuck. I can't breathe. So you go by his last name, Greenblatt. And if you're choosing Greenblatt as a as a default, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. It's I think there's a new bit, right. Elon. That's, that's, that's good. That's good. It's good name yeah. stuff. Yeah. Also, um, Jewish names are tough because autocorrect. Like phones are kind oh. of anti-Semitic because they oh. never know these or these like these real Jewishy kind of names. Yeah. And they all have different words that they default to. Yeah, of course. That's funny. I had. I used to have my phone set up. I could talk literally Hebrew into it while I was on the Yiddish. And then they had one update and it destroyed everything. I had Mashiach energy. I had Shabbat Shalom. I had um, people's names. I had all kinds of- Right, because you do talk to text. I do talk to text. And they there was one update that destroyed it. It made it so hard. Oh yeah, because your texts come through and they're insane, right? Like half of his texts, I'm like, what is going on here? Oh, Modi texts? Yeah. Oh, that's a whole- <laughs> That's a whole thing. I, so we told him, we, we told Ra- him, we told Gav, we yesterday we're going to do an episode on our own. I said, see if Elon's around, see if Gav's around, see who, whoever's around, if, they, if they're if they kind of free. So I said, tomorrow we have, we, we t- taped before you, we had the... Um, Liat Korin and Shani Granot um, for Liat's cousin is Omer Shemtov, who's a hostage in Gaza. Right, so... And- that that was the podcast we did before, and Gav hits me right away. He, go, he, he goes, he said, I've never been held hostage, but I have been kept for a double taping of a podcast. Because <laughs> last time he was here, he just stayed for the for two podcasts. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> again, pause for the, pause for the laughter. Wow. We 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 pause for the laughter with the with the with the families of the hostages and the the. It was an insane episode before you guys. Um, it'll hit me later on how insane that yeah. was. Yeah. And also the fact that you're like best friends with Liat's husband. Oh, we're gym bros. Yeah, yeah of course. Gym bros. gym bros. Is that what you are? We, we are. We are. Does he also drop weights on his face? He does like- not. <laughs> he's, he's risk averse and I'm not. Risk averse. <laughs> uh, no, he's the best. Gym he's bros. Great. Is he also 4 a.m.? Like you? Uh, no, he's like 7, like 6.30 maybe. He's early. A.M. He's early, yeah. But he's, he's, he's not this, you know. No, no, that's this is special Jim Bro. This is ra- you know Rabbi what? Jim Bro. He, 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 he owns the Bialy store. By you, by you. Really? Oh, does yeah. he? He owns yeah. Cosars. Yeah. Yes. He owns Cosars. Cosars. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What a yeah. small world. Yeah. That's so funny. She that's also, so great. What also, a small world. Yeah. So he's also very afraid of 718 numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She also grew up, um, her grandparents, I think, live in my parents' building in Queens, which oh, is also so insane. In Rigo Park. In Rigo Park. Very so, small world. What a small world. 
Wait, we have to talk the event. So what are we yeah, doing? Yeah, so what are we so doing? What are we doing? I don't know. I just figured it's. I. I. I was Do we know how you, long it is? No, no idea. You guys should definitely prepare for it live on the podcast, though. It's a great. No, we should. Yeah. Def- no, I don't know. It's just, if people have idea, I, I. We should prepare questions and answers and all that. We shouldn't just go in there raw. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Raw. Raw. That's the name of the event. Raw. raw. Oh, raw. <laughs> raw. <laughs> <laughs> I shall do a raw, raw, oh my raw, a raw with conversation. Modi and Rabbi Bolino. Invite, invite all the rabbis from the Lower East Side down there. Uh, nice. Um, what is raw rabbis and uh, Rab- rabbis against women? Women. women. Rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> also called rabbis. <laughs> Rabbis are cr- oh, that's hysterical. Rabbis against women. <laughs> that's, <laughs> oh, amazing. that's so funny. <laughs> Rabbis By the way, you know, I, I heard an amazing dvar. T- you know who gives <gasps> amazing little small dvar t- is what? what Cheating what, 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 on what, me. Cheating uh, I on want, me. I was thinking of you guys all morning because my Ari, my son, had a dvar Torah this morning, and I went to his the synagogue in his school, and he oh, he nice. gave. Yeah. What was his message? That um, he used to be lazy and not do his Hebrew homework. And because he's in the native Hebrew speaking class, the expectations on him were higher. And he eventually realized that he should start doing his homework. And he took that responsibility on himself. And Morachava is not mad at him anymore. But it was so sweet. And there were four kids who gave a Dvar Torah. I took pictures. I thought of you guys. Oh, and. No. And then I started thinking, I have no idea what a Dvar Torah is. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, I like that. You made that very obvious. Yes, because do. that was like literally group Dvar. therapy. Dvar, was... le daber, from Dvar. Oh, I thought like a thing. Dvar. 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 No, like Lo. Dibur. Oh, okay. But yeah. The, yeah. Dibur Torah, so Dvar Torah. <laughs> <laughs> Dvar Torah. But what it... it Dvar Torah is like... The, Pluralize, like Pluralize the, it. Pluralize it. Divre... Divrei Saira. Divrei Saira. Saira. Divrei Saira. He drops it's the It's so dove. insane how Ashkenazi and Sephardic sound when they give the Dvar Torahs. Uh-huh. Ashkenazi sound like so... It, it, <laughs> a little sissy, no? <laughs> like a shitty gay? No, 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 no. No, but like... like okay, so in this week's Pasha, we learn out that it's not like... It's, it's it's we it's not that Hashem was was upset. They always use. They always say the verb in Hebrew. So Hashem was holich. He was going. Why do we say he was holich and not yored? Because Hashem can't be yored. He can't be going. And that's how they speak. Meanwhile, <laughs> so far talking such nonsense so, right now. So <laughs> no, 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 nonsense. I'm not. I'm not. I was like and listening then, and and no. then the so far the Torah, the guy is like literally. It sounds borderline Hamas. It's like. <laughs> What does this pasuk say? And then uh, uh, it's very that, no? Yeah, no, no, of course. No, it's also <laughs> when, like when you. I like the speakers when they don't have the conclusion. So then, like, just like they'll make their point, but yeah. like, they can't just get off the stage. So there has to be like. Him here, I'll be a made or right. No, like some kind of, every every some kind of guy. and um, and th- because Abraham was uh, in his tent, we should all be with Mashiach in the tent I mean, and I, uh, I, in the soon. <laughs> that's how they end everything. But are you guys? I I don't. What is this? Are you guys going to explain what this is? A Dvar Torah is is a, a, reason, is a uh, no. Go ahead. Go, I mean, if anybody should be describing. You're pre- it uh, sure, you're trying. You're present. You're trying to present something thoughtful about Torah, about religion, about spirituality. That's Dvar Torah, a word of Torah. So it could be like a one minute thing. It could be, uh, it's usually short. It should be short, right? Because it's not like a sermon. You know what a sermon is. But it could be a long talking sermon. talking to me like I'm, Do like, you? I'm like developmentally disabled. I don't, I don't know what you know. <laughs> There's not, a no. lot you don't know. You need a lot of work. <laughs> you know what a you, sermon like is. Like that son of yours, you need to buckle down. <laughs> And get do some, work. like, do some work. You're, you like, know? learning something? Like, get some wisdom? Yes. Yeah. Like Torah wisdom. knowledge? Hopefully something you walk away with that you can use A in your lesson. day. So, Rabbi Gross, Dina's father, Rabbi Yoko Israel Gross, uh, during, he has the best, he has sometimes long ones, sometimes he just gives you, like, a little nugget, a little nugget of information. So, R- Rabbi Gross, during Passover, turns to me and goes, Mazel. He goes, you know what Mazel means? I go, Luck, he goes. No, it's Rosh Tevis. It's uh, it's 
acronym. Mazal is makom, zman, lashon. So a place, time, and speech. If you're in the right place at the right time and you say the right thing, you have luck. <gasps> That's mazal. That's Wow. Way, that's a Dvar Torah. By the, Finished. By the Finished. way. No need to, you walk uh, away with something. So what did it way, take you three hours the, to even, explain that to me? He's absolutely right because mazal really means, it doesn't mean luck. It mean, it refers to the constellations, the mazalot. Right. So, and that's like a temper, that's a time-based sort of thing. Whenever wow. we say mazal tov, what we're saying is that the timing should be right. That's right. We started like differentiating mazal tov and the sha'at tov. Right. It the, really means the same thing. The, the constellation. Wow. Something could wow. happen to you, Mazal Tov. Because wow. if it wasn't the right timing, one then second, it's nothing. One second. Anything? Um, yeah, once you start talking about constellations, I got into it because I'm a big astrology buff. There you go. <laughs> you now it's religion, uh, guys. This the, is religion to me. Is the it's best a, thing about Elon Altman is he could also not talk and then do a turn to him, boom. He's <laughs> like, literally in the green room. That's him. He could do it like this. And then boom, watch me and Leo taste the Celsius drinks that they bring us <laughs> and the li- and poke around with this with this with the Caesar salad. And he just did like this. <laughs> and then line, line, boom. And he goes <laughs> And then back into hibernation. By the way, that's that's got to be part of what makes him. I mean, he's such a talent. Oh, but that's got to be ma. he's so easy to be around. He's so lovely. Who, who are we talking you? about? A you. pleasure oh. to be around. A Thank you. A pleasure to he's be not having around. A meltdown. And he's his wife not. comes and she's adorable, Sarah. Oh, she's and then so his sweet. family comes, his parents come. <laughs> and they're so sweet. And the father just bought a Honda Odyssey. Oh, he's so happy. He was brand new Honda Odyssey. He drove it to the Tarrytown show and it was parked right outside, cherry red. <laughs> By the way, Honda you Odyssey. want people to know you got the Sparty you car. Honda Odyssey? Honda Odyssey, Lower East Side. How is he not like. An ultra orthodox Jew. He, he was definitely in that minion on Henry Street. <laughs> oh yeah, no. He's, have you ever driven a Honda Odyssey? I have not. It is so much fun. Dina had one for a while. Yeah. And I used to drive it, and I don't know why. There were a few times I drove it, and you feel like you're driving a bus. Like I, I have all these. You, you, can, are. you can literally have like, and there's television sets, and there's like, it's like a, it's like a catering hall. <laughs> 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 Everything becomes a seat. The Ashley becomes a seat. That this becomes it's yeah. Things so much fold fun. out. They fold down. You can. Yeah. She now people. drives brand new Range Rovers only. But 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 this is when the kids were really young and the the door opens up. It's like you're it's like you're you're, oh. you're, you're, you're in a helicopter in Vietnam. I know <laughs> it's, that it's car. In Tidak, in Tidak, they're like you see someone with the keys. Not my car. Not my car. Yeah, they're, they're all like because they're Honda all Honda, Honda, like silver Honda. I think Honda Juanita um, so Foreman has a uh, one really? of those. I think so for That's all so the kids. Funny. It's the best minivan there is. I'm I'm still stuck on this. A pleasure to be around. I don't think pleasure any, to be around. I don't think anybody has ever said I that about me. Said it Absolutely. one time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> about you. People say uh, she's a character. She's a. Ca- <laughs> She's a real piece a of work. Yeah. Say that. that fraud. <laughs> no, they walk away. Machshefa. <laughs> you're not. You're not a machshefa. She's a real tough fraud. A tough yes. cookie. I should start smoking again. No. 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 What do you, smoke? Uh, what do you think? You 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 are a pleasure to be around. You're a, fun. A there's pleasure. a there's a. There's different between fun and a pleasure to be around. What was your cigarette? Um. Cool. No, no, Parliament, like Parliament. Though. Let me know. Then Marlboro Lights. Ugh, really? Virginia what? Slims. Virginia Slims. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> and she would wear, have one of those long sh- cigarette that's holders. That's something a shitty gay would, would smoke. Go ahead. What, what Marlboro you... Lights? Really, Modi? Come on. So the Marlboro Major? It's, I, major. Oh, wait, no, I know. The, um, the Indian one. What's it called? Oh, American, American Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. So He's a oh, it's, I wow. was I was Parliament. Were you like, I was in my head, uh, you, an Israeli woman with this Parliament. My mom used to smoke Parliament cigarettes. Yeah. We had that in the house all the Did time. Did you know in Israel that brand is called Knesset? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we will be at the West Hampton Theater. <laughs> we done anything? Any in, conclu- in conclusion, in conclusion, we're doing this event. It's gonna yes. be. It's gonna be great. What is it? June 4th. June 4th. And then we are going from there straight to Cipriani downtown to dance uh, with the Hatsala, United Hatsala. All right. Mm. Um, we're going to probably come there super late when they start the music and all that. But like, Oh, we'll I'm go. going to that. So we'll see you there. But anyway, um, Eshel uh, event, it, it's going to be also live streamed, right? Lovely. I, I think so. 
right. we'll get that information and, and we'll uh, we'll post it out um uh we are um actively running with the modi cycle oh how are we doing for united Hatsala. by now it probably what? will be done yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The modi cycle the yeah modi so cycle. contact periel if you want to donate for a modi cycle which is a a moped motorcycle that Hatsala has um where they can get to people immediately and help them when they're uh, in distress and, and heart this, attack or, or, or in, in obviously United Hutzala, you all know what that but is. But this and one's going to have a picture of Modi's face on it. Yep. Modi and cycle. Wow. Modi cycle. If you donate, the first three people to donate $10,000 is going to get a ticket to one of your shows. Your choice, whatever show you want. It could and, be the Beacon. It could be Yerushalayim. It could be wherever you want. And Just when you you're... Contact Periel. Yeah, you can... DM me about it on Instagram at Periel. And also, while you're choking to death, somebody will tell you a joke. Beautiful. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> They're also doing one for you, right? That uh, You could donate to get a Perry helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> a Perry helicopter. Oh, so good, Elon. I'm telling it's you. so funny. Boom, folks. It's nice because the sound of the rotors drowns out her voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My husband's going to buy that all by himself. <laughs> Just like while she's talking. <laughs> no, instead of, instead of a siren, it's a woman can drive this too. A woman can drive this too. I used to smoke. I wrote a book. I wrote a book. <laughs> Two books. Two books. Not Gov plugging your books. Uh, Three books three on books. the way. Yes. The yes. third one is on the way. On Great. Main. Mm. Okay. okay. Modilive.com. Okay. The special is out. Know your audience. It's on YouTube. Make sure you watch it and with your family. Again, if your grandmother, grandfather, Saba Safta, Zaidi Bubuk don't have a way to watch it, be the nephew or the or the grandchild that goes over and watches it with them on your iPad or on your TV, pair it up, whatever you do, um, help them out technologically. They should have a laugh. Um, so that's Know Your Audience on YouTube. It's also still on Amazon. Um, and uh, modilive.com for the shows. We are in uh, West Hampton on June I'm sorry, July 28th, and we are um, in Yerushalayim, June 16th, and we are in uh, Atlantic City, and we have many, many more shows, and there's a new tour coming out called uh, Pause for Laughter, and um, everything's on modilive.com. I cannot thank Elon Altman for being on the podcast, and they thank can you. catch all your material and all your dates on... You can go to my website, E-L-O-N-A-L-T-M-A-N.com and find me on Twitter at Alan Altman and on Instagram at Alonstagram. Okay. And the Holy Rabbi of the Sixth Street Synagogue, which is at at Sixth Street, written out. Yes. Yeah, S-I-X-T-H. Yes. Sixth Street Synagogue. And come down for a minion. Sponsor a kiddish. Make that a place that you go to. You don't have to get dressed up. You can go like any of us are dressed. No one needs you in a suit. If, but if you want to do a suit, you can. If you want to do a streimel, do a streimel. You know what that is? The fur hat. If that, feel, if, yeah, if that makes you feel welcome to be there, do it. And people do. We, we, we have people showing up with that. But can women wear that there? But what they do. That's who wears it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> that's who wears it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Modilive.com. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. I sound like a... I sound like a we don't care what you we think. Don't, we don't care what you think. <laughs> Email that's Periel. We, that's why we have our email Periel. And Periel. Well, she'll well, deal with you. And then she'll, let, she'll let you know she'll how much you know she cares. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.